Truck drivers, what's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? Part 7. Unwind and enjoy. If you like what you see, hit subscribe and let your friends know about Thread Tonic. Account 1. Not a driver, yet thinking about it as a career change, used to manage in a large retail store. One morning we had an early morning meeting. A neighboring parking lot had an auto transport with the cab engulfed in flames. Drivers don't normally sleep there, but will park and go to their homes nearby. I park and decide to be noisy and watch from the distance. Firefighters weren't there yet, and after about 10 cc with no sirens, I call 911. No one had called yet. Operator asked if driver was inside, and I said, I don't think so, but if they are, they're dead from smoke or fire. Right then the driver in only his tidy whiteies comes around the back, clearly distraught. It was winter, so I rushed him inside so he could warm up and watch from the windows. I asked his sizes and had an overnight stalker grab him clothes and shoes. His stuff was clearly toast. Account 2. My friend drove for a few years a while back. He told me he was driving a rig very late at night in Utah, driving on a lesser-used two-lane highway. He said he remembers feeling very alert that night, so he noticed what appeared to be a figure manifesting up ahead on the dark road. Told me it wasn't on the road, but just next to it. He then comes to a stop and grabs his heavy-duty flashlight and points it at the figure. He then describes it. Apparently, this humanoid creature had a dead coyote it was eating, and the truck had gotten its attention and pissed it off. So it sort of stands up so he can get a full view of the thing. It was guant, with very big eyes and, of course, the coyote blood all over its face. Its height was about 6'2", it had skinny limbs, no clothing. He then describes how it started to shuffle slowly towards the truck. Not only does he not have a weapon at that time, the only usable weapon being his flashlight, is actively helping him view this creature. He decides to book it and leave. Had no problem passing it. Turned around to see it standing in the middle of the road on two legs as he drove away. When he reaches the nearest rest stop, he sees two other truckers talking. Apparently, my friend wasn't the only one to see the thing. Both the two guys looked as horrified as he was. As for my opinion on my friend's encounter, I have to say my friend isn't one to lie. So his story had me intrigued. I told him maybe what he saw was some mentally ill person out there. But he brushed the idea off saying he knew what he saw wasn't human. I'm not the superstitious type, but his story really did creep me out. Account 3. I used to do music back in the 80s and 90s as part of the sound and setup crew. This entailed many late-night drives in the equipment truck through some very isolated sections of our state after the show to get home. One night, me and my pal were driving through a dark, desolate, swampy area on a two-lane highway around two in the morning. Out of nowhere, we noticed a car that had driven off the road and into the woods. All that was visible were headlights shining on trees and red taillights. Not really knowing what to do, we drove past, but then realized that it, the car in the woods, could have been the result of an accident of some sort. So we were compelled to turn around to check it out in case someone needed help. This situation really creeped me out since I knew I could potentially witness some sort of gruesome accident. And I remember forcing myself out of the truck to reluctantly inspect the situation. Upon arriving where the car was, I walked into the woods to the scene. The car door was open and key alarm beeping. Ding, ding, ding. The headlights still on, but no one to be seen anywhere. No blood, broken glass. My only guess is the car belonged to a drunk driver who drove off the road into the woods and left the scene. I still wonder what happened there that night, but can only assume it was just an abandoned car after the survivor had too much fun. Account 4. Not a trucker. Many years ago, I was driving south on a freeway in the middle of Utah. I haven't seen another car coming or going for miles, even though it's the middle of the day. Then I see a semi ahead in the right lane of this two-lane southbound freeway. I'm gaining on him in my lovely red sports car, so I pull into the left lane to pass. I was slightly over the speed limit to pass him quickly. He was doing slightly under the limit. There is no shoulder, because it's some kind of bridge or culvert crossing. Remember, no other cars anywhere around. Just as I reach the hallway point on the semi, he starts changing lanes for no reason into my lane. I have nowhere to go because there is no shoulder and I am going to die. Time slowed. The world blurred. Somehow I floored it in time and my wonderful car flung me forward and ahead of death. He was fully in my lane when I looked in the rear view mirror. I have no doubt that he tried to kill me. 
It was clear, sunny, and he had nothing in front of him that would cause him to change lanes. There were no curves to hide my very red car as I overtook him. He could easily see me coming on the long straight away. There was absolutely no reason for him to change lanes right as I was passing him. This part of the freeway was always isolated back in the day. There were no cars near us, no animals, and I saw no car for the next few miles as I raced away from him. If he tapped my car or if I overreacted, it probably would have looked like an unfortunate accident. Count five. I used to team drive with my buddy OTR and he was night blind, so I got the night shift. It was about 3 a.m. and we were driving through Central OR and I had two trailer tires blow. So I pulled off the side of the road right near an exit for Dead Man's Pass. I woke my buddy up, we inspected the blowout and started getting a hold of somewhere to come fix the tire. While waiting for a callback, we both noticed an eerie light coming from the edge of the woods off the highway about 40 yards away in front of our truck. Mind you, it is an extremely remote area in which we had not seen a town or light in probably two or three hours, and hadn't even seen another vehicle for an hour or so. We had some time to kill, so we started to walk up and see what was causing the light. We got about ten yards away from the source to discover that it was a goat hanging upside, suspended from two trees with Christmas lights wrapped around it and lit up. We did not know if it was a real goat or fake, how the Christmas lights were powered up. We immediately ran back to the truck and drove the blown tires 70 miles to the nearest truck stop and were not going to stick around and find out the answer to those questions. Account 6. I'll chime in, I have two stories. Not a truck driver, but a rural sheriff's deputy in the middle of the Appalachian Mountains. We had two of us who patrolled almost 500 miles of road and it wasn't uncommon for weird shit to happen. These are the ones that I still can't explain. On patrol one night around 2 a.m., going down a pitch black, no moon, country road, I'm traveling about 60-ish miles an hour, and I come to a set of small rolling hills. I go down the first hill, back up, back down, and as I get to the bottom, there is a person right in front of my car. It looked like an old woman in a white gown. I know it sounds like every scary movie, but this is what happened, and I knew I was going to hit her. I locked up the brakes, and she was dead center of my cruiser about 10, 15 ifed out. I braced for impact, and I guess I locked up the brakes so hard I that old Crown Vic the car fishtailed at the last minute. She passed right beside my door and window. I could have reached out and grabbed her. Of course it all happened so fast it was a blur, no features on the person. I stop. Thank God I didn't kill some poor old woman who wandered out of her house, and you guessed it, she was gone. And to top it off... This was right next to an old church and cemetery. I looked and looked and yelled and never saw the woman again. Eventually, I got creeped out and just left. I have no idea what the hell happened. There are no houses within miles of this church and cemetery. Second story, a few years later or before, I can't remember at this point. It was decades ago. Same part of the county, not that far away, actually, just a few miles down that same exact road. Similar time of night on patrol and I am coming up to a giant straight stretch of the road that contained a four-way intersection. I see headlights approaching me and I slow down, come to a stop at the intersection. I realize after a few seconds the headlights are just sitting in the roadway about 100, 150 yards away. Strange, but not the weirdest thing it could be a drunk. I start driving up to see what's happening and the headlights go out. So I stop for a second and wonder WTF is happening. The lights come back on. I sit there for a second and both lights elevate about 10, 12 eft off the ground and then come together to form a single bright light. At this point, I'm starting to feel my skin crawl. The light immediately goes out. I turn all of my lights on and go down the road and try to figure out what it is I just saw. I came across nothing. No cars, farming equipment, nothing. There's no way whatever was in that road could have gotten around me or turned around and left without me seeing them. To this day, I have no clue what those lights were. Account 7. Back when my dad as a freight train driver, he had to stop at a red light in a wooded area in the middle of nowhere. The guard of the train, who's usually at the back of the train, radioed to tell him that it's going to take a while, so dad got off his cabin to take a leak. As he was watering the bushes, he saw a relatively well-dressed man approaching, approaching him and he asked my dad to give him a lift to the nearest station. This man had a backpack and for some reason an axe. Dad decided to give him a lift and asked him to take a seat in the cabin. All throughout the two-hour journey to the next station, the man didn't put down his backpack or his axe. 
He was eyeing him constantly through the corner of the eye and read a manic expression that you absolutely don't get from a lumberjack who had gotten off work 2 a.m. After dropping off the man, the guard and my dad notified the cops and gave them the man's description. A month or so later, the department was issued a notice to not give lifts to strangers, as the man they had picked up was a gang member and had just shot a man and buried him in pieces in that general vicinity. Account 8. Do you want the one about hallucinating rabbits or the UFO? Who Got up this morning and found this had exploded. Let me get woke and some breakfast and update. P.S. Thanks for the interest. Update. Hallucinating rabbits. I had just started my career as a professional driver and I was going through my OJT. My trainer said I was somewhere in the southwest U.S. In the middle of the night, I'm driving and he's in the bunk. I have never been able to sleep in a moving vehicle and I hadn't gotten good sleep for three to four weeks. It's a dark, lonely, two-lane U.S. highway. Then I see a rabbit run out into the road and I run over it. Kind of sad. Then about 200 feet later, I see another. And a few hundred feet later, I run over two more. I have heard about population explosions of mice, rats, and jackrabbits around the world. And I wasn't stupid enough to put my life or the life of my trainer or the equipment in danger trying to avoid hitting rabbits. And over the next half hour or so, I saw hundreds of rabbits run out and get run over by my truck. My trainer didn't allow smoking in the sleeper, so he came out and sat in the passenger seat for a smoke. I started telling him about all the rabbits, and I said, There's one, there's another, and two more. He looks at me and says, Dude, there's nothing out there. I immediately realized that I was hallucinating from lack of sleep. So I grabbed some brakes, downshifted, and pulled over onto a wide spot on the side of the road. I shut the truck down and grabbed my logbook and started closing it out. He's telling me we can't stop because we'll be late to the delivery. I very calmly told him that I was hallucinating, and now he knows that too. I tell him that I'm not jeopardizing my life, his life, or the equipment, and that I'm going to bed. Sometime later, I wake to him getting the truck down the road to the delivery. In the morning, I'm supervising the unloading and he disappears. He comes back and tells me to go call the driver manager. The DM just asks what happened and I tell him. He basically says that I did the right thing, but I completed my OJT and have been a successful truck driver for 21 years now. Update, UFO incident. I was a new driver still going through OJT. I don't remember if this took place before or after the hallucinating rabbit story. I suspect before. But my trainer and I were going through the southwest U.S. and we see a sign for Roswell NM, site of the famous UFO incident. We start talking about UFOs like guys do. We are both relating our beliefs and experiences. I saw an unidentified flying object when I was in the army with ten other guys. I'm driving, my trainer is in the passenger seat. I look out my window and see a cigar-shaped light following along beside us. Couldn't tell how far away. My heart skipped several beats, my breathing froze, and my stomach was threatening to erupt out of my throat. I couldn't speak, but had to get my trainer's attention to show him the UFO. I looked to the right and started to frantically wave and point when I noticed he had his reading light on. It was square, but at this angle it looked cigar-shaped. Boy, did I feel silly. I finally regained my senses and told him what I thought I saw. We both had a good laugh. I hope y'all enjoyed. Count nine. A friend of mine is a truck delivery driver for a small alcohol and tobacco place near where he lives. Recently, he and I were talking on a Discord call and he sounded like he'd had a rough day. When I asked him what's wrong, he told me about the weirdest shit he'd ever had happen I will now share. My friend I will call Ron. Ron pulled up for a routine stop on a highway truck stop. They had a full order of cigarettes and tobacco products only. When he pulled into the spot, he noticed this little tiny Sunoco at the rest stop, and the attendant was not inside. And I have to preface, this was a tiny fucking store, maybe about the size to fit one attendant and one person to check out, and the bathroom was outside the store. Ron walked up in the store with paperwork to sign off, and as the door opened, the bell rung for the attendant, and an old man with no top hair but long sides came out with his titties out no pants, and a yellow condom on and proclaimed, You're not the banana girl on Tinder, are you? Account 10. Not a trucker, but had to drive home from D.C. to Nowhere K.S. after getting off active duty. I didn't have anything but my car, some clothes, and my late grandpa's old service revolver to my name. Couldn't leave base until 5 p.m., which put me in West Virginia after dark. My GPS decided to transfer me between highways via a few back roads. 
In the meantime, it just quits working. No cell phone, no GPS, and it's dark in the boonies. Figured I'd call it a night and find my way out from my atlas in the morning. I pull off the road path, lock my doors, put up sunshades on my windows, and get some sleep. It was a nice hatchback sleeper setup, MHO. I was just starting to doze off when I hear footsteps on gravel. I perk up, and it's definitely something on two legs, and it's definitely getting closer. So I fumble to get my sidearm without looking while trying to peek through the shade to see anything. Black, I can't see a damn thing. All the wildlife is silent, and I can hear footsteps circling the car. Back passenger handle pulled, front driver, driver rear. Hatch. Silence. I'm hoping they'll think it's abandoned and fuck off. I pull back the hammer on the revolver, and as soon as it clicks, there's a pounding on the hatch glass. I rip the sunshade down and see a man in an open plaid shirt just going to town on my window with his fists and eyes that I've only seen on a rabbit right before slaughter. We lock eyes and he just starts screaming. Not even words, just straight up screaming. So I scream back that I'll blow his head off if he doesn't fuck off. He takes off to the rear of the car. I catch my breath, climb into the driver's seat, and start the car to get the fuck out of there. Suddenly, my window just fucking explodes into nothing. Later learned that broken spark plugs will do that. And he's reaches in the car, yanks me out the window. Terrified, I fall awkward as shit as I clear the window, so I'm on the ground. He's kicking the shit out of me and... I'm scrambling trying to find the gun I dropped in the commotion. Seemingly out of nowhere, this random middle-aged guy comes charging out of the woods and decks the fucker. They tussle a bit. I find the gun under the car. Crazy guy one fucks off and I draw down on crazy two. He puts his hands up, asking me not to shoot and generally being rational. I asked what he was doing out here and he said, Well, I'm not here to fuck spiders. Then explained he's out here on vacation in a cabin, heard screaming and came to help. I thanked him and got the fuck out of there, found a Walmart a few towns over and slept under a street lamp. Called my dad the next day to tell him I'd be late because I had to replace a window and explained what happened. When he heard the spider thing, he laughed and made a joke about his dad always saying that because he had a bunch of Australian pilot buddies. Apparently it means like, the fuck does it look like I'm doing? Now my grandpa died before I was born and I'd actually never seen a photo of him aside from a service photo when he was about 20. So I get home, and I go to put Grandpa's gun back in Dad's lockbox. I almost shit my pants when I see a photo inside of my dad with the dude that saved me, down to the clothes. I flip it over, and it's got my dad and Grandpa's names on it in 1990 on it. So I ask my dad when that picture was, and he says it's special because that was taken the morning of Grandpa's accident. I'm not saying I believe in ghosts, but it's a real fucked up coincidence that the guy who saved me from a tweaker is a dead ringer for the guy whose gun I was trying to grab to protect me. T-L-D-R. I think the ghost of my dead grandpa beat a tweaker's ass after they broke into my car. Count 11. My dad knows a lot of truck drivers that would do the routes in Mexico. Dangerous and such cause of theft in certain areas. His friend talked about him driving from Sonora to, if I remember correctly, to Colima. There are some dangerous roads on those mountain passes, but as soon as you clear it, it's smooth sailing. He said before he got to the pass, he stopped to get snacks and a few drinks. He said he was maybe 10 hours or so done so he could take his vacation. As he was hoping into the truck, a young lady asked if he could take her just up the road to her home where her family was waiting for her. He says yes, and he drives about an hour and drops her off at this large hacienda. She thanks him, kisses him, and tells him I will be here waiting for you when you come back and to be careful on the mountain trails as they are very dangerous. He hugs her and says he will return for a beauty like her and kisses her back. After a slow and steady pace, he clears the mountains, delivers, and starts the trip back to Baja. He stops at that hacienda in the middle of the day and asks about the girl. The old gentleman says, what does she look like? The man gets a sad expression on his face and says that was my daughter. She died on those mountain passes when her bus went over the side. Needless to say, it scared the hell out of him because he said that the kiss was very cold, but he assumed it was the air. After 17 years of driving, he retired and lives in Texas now. Account 12. I'm a trucker. And the creepiest thing to happen to me was a guy at the side of the road waited until I was real close and ran out in front of me and stopped in the middle of the lane expecting to get run over. 
Luckily, I didn't have a load on and had fast reflexes and swerved around him, barely missing him by inches. I watched in my mirror and traffic behind me was dodging him as well. He was definitely trying hard to die that day. I reported him to the police but didn't hear whatever came of him. Account 13. Years ago, Dad took Mum, me, and my sister on one of his interstate routes and made it a camping trip where we would set up a tent each night. One night we stopped in the middle of nowhere and set up. During the middle of the night, Mum really needed to pee but was worried as she could hear strange noises. She woke us all up and all we could hear was what sounded like heaps of people walking around us. This was super freaky as we were hours from a big town. Dad ended up grabbing a cricket bat and a torch freaking out that stuff was about to go down. He opened up, the tent flap ready to defend us, and we were surrounded by cows. There were hundreds of them. Apparently the area we were in was known for faceless grazing where the cows could go where they please. Mom just hung on for the night, ha ha. This is in Australia BTW, from memory it was Northern Territory. Account 14. This isn't a story, but thank you OP for asking the question. And thank you Redditors for sharing. It's been a stressful sleepless night, and it's nice to be able to finally unwind with some soft core horror. I'm always looking for new material. Account 15. Not a trucker, but this happened on a road trip with my ex GF, and I've always wanted to tell this story. We were headed to Eureka, CA from Oregon, and had to go on this highway 299. We had a late start to our day, so it was nighttime by the time we set out on 299, thinking it would be just a normal stretch of rainy highway. We were thoroughly unprepared for how twisty and isolated it was. Midnight came and it'd been pouring rain. GF was dodging rockfall for the entire drive so far. She was absolutely drained. We found a flat place to pull over for a quick nap, like a little outcrop of dirt alongside the road. The rain had stopped, but it was muddy, and man was it quiet. Eerily so. We were both so drained we just crashed for about 30 minutes or so in our respective seats. Keep in mind, we'd been on the road for a while and hadn't passed a single car the entire time. I woke up to the sound of scratching underneath the car that I brushed off as an animal. Then I heard steady plopping out in the mud like someone was circling our car but didn't see a damn thing. I elbowed my girl thinking she was still asleep, but she was fully awake and frozen in place and just said, I know. She said she had this feeling that something was off from the second we pulled into that spot. We held deathly still for a bit longer, still reckoning it was a deer or something, in denial. I got a literal wave of goosebumps when we heard that faint scratching start up yet again. This time we bolted into action, and she threw the car into reverse pretty quickly. Suddenly she screamed, There's someone there! Oh my god! As she saw a figure dive into a nearby bush, lit up from the reverse lights. I looked but didn't see anything. We both were in 100% panic mode and practically skidded back onto the road. The rest of the drive back into CA was unremarkable. But we did have a motorcycle tail us for most of the way back after that. From a decent distance, luckily. But seeing that faint light bobbing far behind us gave us the creeps on top of everything. Probably unrelated, but who knows. Everything felt creepy and wrong for the rest of the night. Be careful on Highway 299 in Oregon, guys.